and uh, you know, as usual, Grand Theft Auto known for their great open world games. It's uh, it's they've they sh they did it again. They, it was a very good, very well done game. You know, the open world and just the city and just how it looks and uh, all the interaction you can have with all the people. It's it's a very good game. My gripe is not at all with anything to do with offline. Now what what my problem is? I have a problem with the wanted trophy, which is an online trophy. Um, it's a so pretty much what I've been trying to do for the last few months, I started this about six, seven, eight months ago, back in last summer, I decided that I wanted to play through the game again. So in doing so, I started kind of getting trophies as I've been really thinking about it, and or even trying, then I kind of decided, you know, since I'm, I'm a trophy hunter and I like platinum in games, I thought maybe I'd try giving this game a, tr a try to platinum. So I started working my way through, working my way through, and then once I'd done everything that was offline for all the trophies I just died and move on to the online trophies you know so and one of the trophies online is the wanted trophy or you know as also if you have, if you have an Xbox is Xbox is an achievement now what the wanted trophy is is that you it, what you have to do is you have to become the highest rank possible multiplayer now the highest rank possible is rank 10 and now to get to rank 10 you have to amass a fortune of five million dollars now, how do you earn money online? Just by doing, you know, deathmatch, team deathmatch, mafia work, carjack city, or the uh, the co-op missions that they have online. Um, you get money each time that you complete any of these things. So pretty much, you have to just keep working your way up and working your way up. Now, five million dollars is a lot of money, considering if you play deathmatch and all you're walking away with is a thousand dollars per round, or if you do the missions and all your if you do the missions on hard. All you're going to be walking away with each time is about, I'm going to say about six to eight thousand dollars each time. So you've got to think six to eight thousand dollars each round, and you're trying to get up to five million dollars. Very, very time consuming, borderline ridiculous, just absolutely ridiculous. Even now that I found out about the sniper glitch, you know, I've I found out about it and I thought, okay, this is great. Now I'm going to have a faster way to earn the five million dollars. I can just get this done and out of the way with. But even then, how many times can I sit there and kill the two respawning snipers just over and over and over and over again? It's just insane that Rockstar thought that anybody in their right mind would want to spend all these countless hours trying to get this wanted trophy just so they could platinum the game. It is just, like I said, it is just ridiculous. Like I even said, with the sniper glitch, you know, it takes, you, it takes me about an hour and a half to hit the hundred thousand dollar mark, and I was get, you know, at first I thought it was great, and I was trying to get my buddy, you know, buddy, my buddy to help me out, and we were going online every day and doing it, but it's just become unbearable and so redundant that I can't even, even when I'm trying to do it once a week, I'm still trying to earn the five million dollars. That's how ridiculous it is, and it's been months now. It's been four or five months that I've been trying to do it, but now it's just become I can't even, I can't even bother to even think about it anymore. That's how ridiculous this is. And the way it is, the way that you level up is absolutely ridiculous. Like, right now, I'm rank 8, but I'm just over a million dollars. And when you get to rank 9, to get to rank 9, you need, you need to have two and a half million dollars. Think about that for a second. Two and a half million dollars. And you're rank 9. So that means, like I said, to get to, to, get to rank 10, you need to amass a fortune of five million dollars. So if you're rank 9, only one rank away, and you only have two and a half million dollars, you're only halfway done, but you're rank 9. It makes no fucking sense whatsoever. I don't know what the hell they were thinking, and just talking about now, it just pisses me off. I'm just... It pisses me off. So... I don't know. Like I said, I'm, st I'm still trying to earn the $5 million. I, have, I haven't played the game in weeks. I don't even give a damn anymore. I'm ready to move on to the next game. This is just, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. Fucking piece of shit, motherfucker. Hey, Jordan Crook here, and today I'll be talking about the anime series Eden of the East, which was done by Production IG, the people who brought you Ghost in the Shell. And on that note, it is actually directed by the same director of Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. So, the guy knows his shit. Um, so to actually talk about the show itself, I would like to preface this review by saying that the show is 
censored, which is probably a good thing considering the state that we find our protagonist in at the beginning of the series. Now, I actually watched this series due to how unique the plot was. This guy, this Japanese guy, wakes up naked across the street from the White House holding nothing but a handgun and a cell phone with absolutely no memories of who he is. So that's kind of what caught me, it was the plot there. And as we move on, we find out, you know, there's this girl across the street who uh, tries to throw a uh, penny into the fountain in front of the White House for reasons that I'm still slightly confused about. Um, yeah, that, that, that'll come up a lot, this point of being confused. They sort of failed to mention quite a few things in this series, but I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later on. Inevitably, the security guards wonder what it is she's trying to do and think she might be a terrorist, so they go to arrest her. Luckily, here comes our protagonist, you know, naked and flailing a gun. Obviously grabs their attention. <laughs> um, so they go to chase him, and he slips away from them and finds her. So, you know, she thanks him, gives him her coat, so, she, so he's, you know, no longer naked. And then he uh, goes about his way trying to figure out who he is and how he got here. So he quickly realizes that he owns this small apartment in the middle of, like, freaking nowhere. So he goes there to find out who he is. And that does not help him much, as for that he has about six passports and a shitload of guns in his closet. I'm not even kidding. It's kind of awesome. Which I would also like to state, at this point we encounter a common theme of the, of the, uh, the series. It's a really big film fan, and they make a lot of good movie references, which is, you know, nice for film fans like myself. Taxi driver. But anyway, as the story carries on, he, you know, finds the girl. The, actually, the girl finds him, because she left her passport in the coat she gave him. And they go back to Japan. And we slowly start to find out about the other common themes of this plot. The largest one of which being revolves around a theme that is quite commonly referred to in the story, which is actually best represented by the term they use, which is noblesse oblige, which means the, uh, the noble obligation. They have these phones. These 12 random people have these phones. He's one of them, clearly. That have 10 billion yen on them and they're given very little instruction on what to do with this money other than that they have to spend all of it and they have to try and use it to save Japan. If they fail in these tasks, they're, uh, they're killed. So that's about the plot as I can see it without going any further. I you know, really prefer not to spoil the series, but it is quite interesting. Anyway, now that I've had a chance to talk about the plot without spoiling it too far, I hope, um, I guess it's time to really start looking at it critically, and I guess I'll start with the, uh, the animation and the art design. Now, the animation is nice. It's very well done. There's very few hiccups, if any. But it's really nothing special. The art design, by the same you know, token, is also, you know, very, very... Well, it, it just is, you know? There's nothing special about it, but it's not bad. I mean, yeah. Moving right along to the audio. I'd like to start this section out by saying I do not watch anime in the original Japanese, so I cannot speak for the Japanese voices. The dub, on the other hand, is very well done, as it should be, because it is done by Funimation. Which, as those of you who know, pretty much everything Funimation does is very well done. But as a bit of a change of pace for Funimation, they do not use their heavy hitters. The cast is made up of some of the less used people, but it plays well to its effect. It's not the voices you've heard a million times, so it doesn't drag you out of the plot to go, Hey, that's, you know, that's that guy. It allows you a lot more fluent, and it flows a lot better with the audio. With this said, onward to the music. The music is actually very well done as well with the exclusions of the opening and the outro. A lot of people seem to like the opening and the outro, and the animation in them are very well done, but I did not care for the music. I found it very skippable, and I don't know, it just didn't work for me. Otherwise, the uh, most of the original score was very well done and very well used. Onward to my final thoughts. The series I found was put together rather well. Everything fit and the story was quite unique. With that said, there was a lot of shit that went unanswered. unanswered. 